Hey, thank you very much for your kind introduction. I am uh, very happy to be here. Thank you uh, for the invitation and apologize for the long title. But uh, I would like to explain our effort on world brain modeling and world brain uh, simulation, large scale simulation, and also um, how it uh, all do those efforts uh, led to build a new framework for uh, collaborative uh, modeling. Um, first of all, let me comment about our targets in computational modeling. We have technical targets and scientific targets. Uh, technical targets include uh, large scale simulation um, for different species, for models of different species on supercomputer. In the case of Japan, we are talking here about the Fugaku supercomputer. And also we need to improve the performance of the simulation. So we are working in, in terms of making shorter the computational time and also lower uh, memory consumption, for example. And the ultimate goal, of course, is to simulate a real size of uh, the human brain. Uh, regarding to the uh, scientific uh, targets, uh, we would like to investigate the dynamic nature of the whole brain, which is realized by the interaction of uh, multiple types of neurons. We want to understand also dynamics of cognitive and motor function, mental disease as well. And also, uh, we want to constrain biologically the model more and more to imp for improving um, its results. And I think uh, musculoskeletal uh, models integration, like uh, in a way of uh, co-simulation with other systems is very important. Uh, first, let me explain our efforts on, on modeling the world brain. We are working with several groups. You can see on the uh, right-hand side, uh, each of these groups across Japan, and also we have uh, collaborators in Europe as well. Each group they model um, a different region of the brain. We have um, so far include in, in our world brain model, sensory cortex, motor cortex, basal ganglia, cerebellum, and also here we uh, have uh, uh, thalamus as well. So we connected those uh, different uh, models as a whole brain. So we are using for um, organizing the, the, to the topology and the organization of the neurons, uh, NEST. We are using multiple layers uh, for one layer per uh, neuron type, and also we have several integrate and fire neuron types and synapse models. So most of the synapses in this model are static, but we are also testing dopamine-based STDP uh, synapses for, for the uh, regions, um, uh, for the synapses connecting cortex and basal ganglia. So each model was uh, biologically constrained separately, and now what we are doing is uh, improving the interregional connections by a uh, testing resting state. For example, here you can see resting state only I am showing a, a somatosensory cortex and motor cortex. We are, uh, we are here showing the raster plots, um, here the activity, the mean activity, and we see that so somehow it shows low value for the resting state for one uh, second biological time, and as well as the motor cortex uh, around uh, 10 or no more than 10 hertz. So, and also in the bottom layers, we can see some kind of uh, oscillations, which are uh, uh, were observable in real activity of the brain. Um, but uh, we want to uh, scale the model. We would like to have much more larger uh, simulations. So you can see in the graph on, on the right hand side that uh, we have a reference a patch, a cortical patch of one by one millimeter square where uh, this is our reference scales. And gradually we start uh, increasing the area, this surface, and proportionally, of course, the, the number of neurons, the size of the model. And here it, it comes uh, uh, several issues, uh, technical issues. 
and we uh, partner with NES uh, in this uh, project called Exa Brain Prep, preparing brain models for Exa scale systems. In Japan, the Exa, Exa scale system is the Fugaku supercomputer. So the target is to address the scaling issues. So it takes a lot of time to build a, a large network. And also it consumes um, uh, high amounts of memory. Uh, we partnered with NES and they started preparing new functions. But first of all, we needed to migrate our world brain model from a ver previous version, NES 2 to NES 3. That was the first step. And then inside, a in the model code also to implement the new functions that were a uh, new function developed by, by, by Nest team. So they developed several ones. I just want to mention a few of them, which are uh, those that uh, allows us to, to improve the, the simulation performance. One of them is the collocated synapses um, a function that I think it is already available in the last release of NES that it allows to create connections uh, several, with several synapses simultaneously. And we have in our model, for example, the connection between uh, cortex and the striatum in the basal ganglia, uh, double receptors for those excitatory connections, AMPA and an NDA. So with this collocated synapse um, function, we can wire these two different synapses once simultaneously. Another uh, interesting function is the aggregated connection rules. So it will um, record somehow all the connection rules that uh, are needed for uh, wiring the network. And at the end, there is a main function called build a network that um, try to aggregate, try to reduce the parallelization calls and try to use similar connection rules across uh, several pairs of uh, population. Um, this was uh, mainly a the function that helped us to, to improve the performance. However, we are still working uh, with them. Uh, they are producing uh, several prototypes and we are uh, systematically testing on Fugaku supercomputer. So, but before the testing, we needed to install NES, uh, NES3, uh, which, which was not uh, so simple. Uh, we have a speci a special compilers in, in Fugaku made by my Fujitsu, those compiler needs uh, are being configured by several, we can say flags or several options. So we need to test the different um, combination of these uh, com compiler flags to and, and try to detect which one is the best for NES. So we use in this case, a small Brunel network and we uh, install NES using several uh, different options. And then we tested the uh, construction time of the network as well as the simulation time. And we found somehow some uh, good settings. So based on this, we started our test using uh, our world brain model. I am using, I am now showing results only for the basal ganglia part. Uh, however, right now we are testing the full, uh, the world brain model. So the idea with this scaling test at Fugak Supercomputer are increase here gradually the um, um, computational resource and proportionally the network size. So for the basal ganglia, we could reach a, a size of the network um, um, equal to uh, the marmoset uh, basal ganglia. Um, and it took around 20,000 seconds. Um, uh, in the memory uh, case also, it, it consumes around, um, let's say, 20 giga per node. So this was the prototype one. Then um, after some time, Nest team provided a new prototype. And here I am showing the comparison between the previous total time, the previous prototype, and the prototype two, the green line. And you can see the difference, which is um, a, a very good improvement. The computational time 
is almost uh, flat uh, for any size of the of the network and also we can see here uh, improvements in terms of the memory consumption so now um, uh, the memory can still be improve i think so uh, next team is now uh, working towards prototype 3 which is now actually we are testing now in, in Fugaku supercomputer uh, for the whole uh, brain scale and um, i don't have the data right now but i i will be happy to share after after i get it okay the next step in this project is exa brain prep uh, we want to continue uh, testing scaling to marmoset, macaque, and if, if, if possible to the human brain uh, size, while improving the model fitting and evaluating, of course, the model uh, dynamic against uh, experimental data. That is, uh, in summary, the next step for this um, project. And in terms of the model dynamics, uh, we try to incorporate as much as possible data from uh, publications and experiments, but also uh, having um, a physical system helps to, to improve the constraints and, uh, and try to, to, to see how the model behaves under this uh, um, physical setup, experimental setup. So we partnered with the neuro robotic platform in a project called uh, RoboBrain. So the idea is to integrate our model with, uh, rod uh, with the model of the uh, rodent musculoskeletal model, integrate and perform some kind of uh, experimentation in the NRP platform. So they built for us the physical setup. Um, it, it was, it is a model uh, uh, for a limb, a mouse for a, for a limb manipulating a joystick with two degree of freedom. This was, uh, this setup was based on a previous work from Mackenzie Matisse in 2017. Uh, basically the mouse reached, grab and pull the joystick uh, into a virtual box for receiving a reward. And then the neuro robotics platform team kindly prepared the setup. You can see here on the on the right, um, uh, the forelin has eight muscles. Even they prepare for us here. You can see at the bottom there is a magnet that uh, provides kind of. Um, a force field, a lateral force field, that also could be, I think, um, uh, prepared for a future experimentation. But this the setup is very similar to the real uh, uh, experiment. And then for simulating our brain in uh, eBrain's uh, platform, uh, they needed to deploy a new infrastructure, a new architecture, um, because uh, they need the computational power for the simulation. So what they did is they prepare a graphical interface and in the front end, uh, they made a front end based on Castor persistent virtual machines where in the front end you uh, allocate the resources. This front end connects to, through an API called Unicore to the um, clusters, to the HPC. And then you can allocate and simulate our um, the, um, our model. So uh, they use for this experiment 32 nodes for the brain and one node for the body. Um, if you want more details about uh, this uh, deploy architecture, there is a related paper which was uh, released this year explaining uh, this uh, effort and where all of us participated in the building of this um, um, paper. Of course, the, the war was uh, led by uh, NRP um, team. Uh, and then the proof, uh, there was a proof of concept on the um, eBrains infrastructure where um, the motor cortex of our model was stimulated and the brain body connection allowed the, the movement of the of the forelimb, as, as you can see here in the uh, visualization in the animation. 
Um, of course, it is still, uh, I think, uh, a little slow, but uh, somehow it provides uh, new cues about how model behaves uh, in combination with the uh, experimental uh, setups models. So the next step for RoboBrain would be to implement properly a, a task in, in the physical setup. So um, thinking on implement, the implementation of a proper task, we first need to implement reinforcement learning. In our model of the basal ganglia, we, uh, the idea is to have a large um, uh, model of the basal ganglia and test reinforcement learning. So we have here, um, I am showing here the, the, the current model that uh, has also uh, dopamine stdp based uh, synapses, and we are now working on improving the cortical circuitry of the striatum. As you can see on the right uh, hand side picture, where I am showing there two different, um, from two different cluster, separated cluster of cortical neurons, how the cortical afferents uh, are connected into the striatum. And you can see that the, there is some overlap uh, between those uh, connections. And we are also incorporating a different type of neurons for um, testing how dopamine affects uh, uh, the dynamics during reinforcement learning. Okay, uh, but as you can see, we are working with several groups um, across Japan and also in Europe. Uh, the model is large. Um, we have so many uh, hundreds of parameters. It's, it's very difficult to, to simulate. And the most important thing is how we deploy the model, how we present the model to the scientific community. It's, um, it should be simple. It should be straightforward. So thinking on that, um, for the future models, we started thinking and developing a framework, which is called SNN Builder. It is a spiking neural network uh, builder for systematic data to model workflow. So the idea is to improve the impact of the computational models in neuroscience. And we want to build with transparency and data-driven validation and promote no more black boxes because uh, it's, it's very hard to, to present a model in, in, a, in, a, high, in a high rank uh, publication. So we want to build properly and also collaboratively. I say, when I say collaboratively, we are talking multiple data sources, probably across different uh, brain projects um, and also multi-users with the collaboration of multiple people. So the idea of this framework is to, to have a tool, a, a model builder, that's um, the conceptualization is this model builder should capture uh, experimental data, uh, parameters from papers, prior knowledge, assumptions, and incorporate this specification into a database. As you can see in the right-hand side, there is a database also supporting this uh, framework. And every parameter should be easily traceable to the source, uh, to, to, to its origin, from where it comes, for proper acknowledgement. And also the builder provides a simulation code, the model description, and also the cost function, the desired behavior. So in this way, using the simulation code, um, a simulator, for example, NES, uh, we can incorporate uh, those uh, results. In, we can use an optimizer and then optimize uh, the free parameters, which will be then stored again in the database. So we think that this way um, will allow the evolution of models and they can be sustained over the time. So instead of building new models every time, we should focus on one and then improve this over the time. So if we have, for example, new experiments, new discoveries in the future, easily this data should be loaded here and the model uh, should be updated. 
a new version of the model uh, should be easily uh, constructed. So as I mentioned, this, um, this, is, this framework is uh, actually a tool um, which it works over internet and it incorporates a database where we have in this database, we try to um, model this uh, data uh, as a generic way uh, because we want to support the construction of any region of the brain. So we have in a group for a, a tables, group for uh, neurons, other group for projections. Here we have um, tables for recording reference and notes for the traceability. And here in orange, we have table for recording the uh, neuron and synapse model from um, a, the neural simulators. So there is a, recently we released this uh, tool and there is a publication. So I invite you to, to take a look. And also if you want to explore the tool, here is the link. And also we have a test user, which allows you to, to see uh, uh, the graphical interface and also generate, generate code. If you want more uh, a user with more permission, you can contact uh, me anytime. And if you find a bug, please uh, let me know as well. So the workflow is um, uh, simple. So we load from expertise, from paper, the parameters, the model specification through this uh, graphical the interface, and we store those in the database. Then from Nest in the top, uh, we also load uh, nest models into the database, not the model itself, but the, the, the parameter structure, the data, uh, the data, uh, the parameters labels, let's say, as a, we prepare them as a JSON file and load into the database. And also we are working now, actually it's already implemented, uh, connectomic data uh, loading. So um, connectomic data can be assumed as edge and connections. And in our database, uh, they become neurons and connection. So it's a straightforward uh, mapping. On the right-hand side, you can see the um, uh, graphic, uh, graphical interface. We try to build this as, as simple as possible. You can see, you can choose the, the species and then uh, click on build a new model. So once you build the model, you click in the title and you access to this um, kind of uh, several tabs where we organize the data. So you can click in all those tabs for start loading the specifications. And also uh, we are working on uh, visualization of the simulation, preparing several tabs. So this tool, it doesn't allow online simulation at this point. It, the output is a simulation script that should be managed uh, separately. But in the future, we would like to continue probably collaboration with your brains for uh, uh, getting uh, their expertise for online simulation. Um, and the idea is to promote also with this the um, multiple user access in a way that everybody can uh, cooperate and we, and we can get uh, something called collective intelligence. For example, if we want to define a parameter, let's say the dendrite extent of a certain uh, neuron, uh, several users can contribute with different values and then uh, uh, all of those can be um, okay. The, all of those can be recorded here. Um, the reference, the and then for the model, we should take the collective out outcome, which is the average of all of this. So this is well described in this book, The Wisdom of Growth. So if you have the time, please take a look also. Uh, I think uh, all of us working together, uh, we can be very uh, interesting uh, uh, models, I, I, I guess. So, okay, finally, the future work, uh, where are we going with this tool? So 
this is the idea is to, to integrate SNN Builder with other system, databases, and of course, uh, online simulation. So, so far, this top part was already developed, but um, uh, we are loading Connectomic using JSON files. But what about if we could have a web service provided by uh, other, uh, by a partner, where this web service can query a connectom and then provide a section of the connectom that comes straightforward and can be loaded as neuron and connection. Also, we are uh, trying to promote these web services through internet uh, or APIs in order to, to collaborate uh, and try to uh, get data source, uh, explore data source in order to automatically uh, provide a model specification options here as well. And we can also, I think, uh, if other similar tools exist in other projects, uh, we can have a web service that connects tool with other tool. So the vision is SNL really has, can develop several versions of the same model, sustain the model over the time. And just imagine if you can, um, uh, this this certain model evolve. Several participants are working in different models, and just imagine in the back back end a group of experts trying to connect those separate uh, separated model as a full brain. I think uh, this can uh, lead to a brain platform that can be used for several applications, clinical applications, scientific research, brain-inspired AI, and, and so on. OK, uh, finally, I would like to thanks to Human Brain Project, eBrains, especially Nestim, Hans Plesser, and, and his team, and the neurorobotic platform team, Fabrice Morin and team. Um, <coughs> Uh, without their help, I think we couldn't uh, reach to, to these uh, results. We want to continue the, the collaboration and also to the collaborators in Japan, which are distributed across this institution. Thank you very much.